Over the last few months, yet another popular new trend has been gaining steam on TikTok, uh, though I didn't hear about it until yesterday when I saw an interesting video that conservative commentator Lauren Chen had made on the subject. Now, it's strange that um, I would be so behind the curve on this, because as you all know, I'm, I'm usually very plugged in. I'm very with it, up to date on all the trends. I think I'm known that way. In any case, this fashionable new trend is called the stay-at-home girlfriend. There's a BuzzFeed article explains what it's all about, though perhaps it's rather self-explanatory. This is what it says. The day-to-day -day life of Kendall K., one of TikTok's maligned stay-at-home girlfriends, appears in her viral videos to be, well, fairly dull. We're jealous. Her glamorous non-employment non doesn't seem to entail much more than journaling, preparing healthy snacks, and seeing an occasional butterfly. On Twitter, people say that she seems like she has been lobotomized, highly medicated, or generally unfulfilled. Her meticulous self-care and fitness routines, a symptom of the spreading that girl aesthetic, have been compared to that of American Psycho's serial killer Patrick Bateman. Parody videos abound. But her slow, soft life resonated with many. Instead of criticizing her lack of a nine-to-five, they related to the dream of one day being rich enough to have a do-nothing job. We've long been on the verge of a hustle culture reckoning, and Kay is one post away from leading the revolution. Is it possible some of these critics were just jealous too? Now, there are apparently many videos on TikTok of these stay-at-home girlfriends showing what their sort of day-to-day -day life is like. Um, here's a sampling from the TikToker mentioned in that article. Here it is. This is my day in the life as a stay-at-home girlfriend. I'm currently in Vancouver, so I'm in a new house, which is so fun. And the first thing I do is take my aloe shot. I love having this on an empty stomach. And I take my greens. Then I get straight to making Luke's coffee because he's definitely a caffeine, first thing in the morning kind of guy. I am adding some honey and cream, and I made these cookies yesterday, so I'm going to give him a couple of those to eat with his coffee. And then I sit down and do some journaling and some reading, and then I get to making myself a matcha with some cinnamon and ground ginger, and then I add some cashew milk on top. Yum. Then I do my skincare and my LED mask, and then some ice rolling. Just love doing the longest skincare routine in the morning. Then I love to open all the blinds in the house and get all the sunlight I can and make the bed, of course, to keep the house tidy and looking its best. Then it's time to make some breakfast. I've been loving these oats lately. Well, you probably get the idea there. Actually, her morning routine is a lot like mine. Um, you know, I stumble out of the out of uh, my room and I'm like uh, just uh, barely awake and my kids try to talk to me and say, don't, don't talk to me until I have my aloe shot and greens and do my skincare routine, with the ice roller, whatever that is. Uh, no, actually that doesn't happen, but, but at least the part where she makes coffee, I can relate to that. The rest of it, not so much, but uh, as the BuzzFeed piece alluded to, not everyone is on board with the stay-at-home girlfriends. Uh, as is always the case with a TikTok trend, there has arisen a competing trend of videos explaining why the other trend is deeply problematic. And critics are primarily concerned that stay-at-home girlfriends are living a terribly unfeminist life, having deprived themselves of the empowerment and glamour of the cubicle in favor of living under the misogynistic tyranny of a boyfriend who provides for their every need. According to these critics, you know, a woman is, is supposed to put on a pantsuit and go to work and climb the corporate ladder, a life that is so famously liberating and enriching to the soul. She's certainly not meant to be at home. Meanwhile, other critics have decided that it is, of course, racist to be a stay-at-home girlfriend. Here's user Fazioli Breadstick explaining this logic. This just reminded me of a thread I saw on Twitter the other day. You can pause to read, but this is from the Cindy Noir. I've already made multiple videos about Greek life, but you should definitely pause and read her take on it. Once again, I just want to reiterate that it's not my business or anybody else's for that matter, what you choose to do, whether you work or don't work. And let me be very clear that when I'm talking about the stay-at-home girlfriend trend, I'm not talking about how other cultures divide labor in the household. Rather, I am talking about the very recent cultural phenomenon in which white women in particular romanticize the idea of opting out of labor that is otherwise delegated to lower income people and people of color. What do videos like these tell you about A, who gets to rest, B, who deserves rest, and C, how do you get rest? 
find it interesting that in these videos, nobody is calling these women lazy or gold digger. In fact, most of them are concerned that they're being taken advantage of. When you look at most social movements and political movements, upper white middle class women are nowhere to be found. Because if they wanted to create meaningful social change, they could. They choose not to because it goes against their class interests. There, my drop by. Right, no one is calling these women lazy or gold diggers except for all the thousands of people who are calling them exactly that. This is very common on the left. They'll often declare, you know, when white people do fill in the blank, nobody criticizes them for it. Yet in reality, everyone criticizes them for it, including the person claiming they're not being criticized for it. Indeed, the truth is the other way around usually. If it was primarily black women making the stay-at-home girlfriend videos, then you wouldn't be allowed to criticize it. But in this case, Miss Breadstick seems to be arguing that because so many racial minorities are not able to opt out of the labor force, white women shouldn't opt out either. They must be allies. They must make their lifestyle decisions based on what other people are doing. They're not allowed to be happy because that would be unfair to all of the racial minorities who Miss Breadstick assumes are not happy. This is allyship. And here, allyship specifically means, apparently, getting a job in the service industry even if you don't need it or want it which only means that you'll be taking a position away from someone, potentially a racial minority, who does need it and want it. So I don't think that Ms. Breadstick has thought this all the way through. But these criticisms are all, you know, of course, extremely stupid. It may be unfeminist to become a stay-at-home girlfriend, but there's nothing wrong with being unfeminist. On the contrary, that's the lane that any woman should want to be in, considering that feminists are also resentful and miserable. If, if you don't know which way you want to go in life, uh, and you're a woman, you, you could do worse than simply just looking at whatever feminists are doing and heading in the exact opposite direction. It's also obviously not racist to live your own life how you want to live it. You're not morally required to conduct a racial inventory before making every decision in your life. And even if you did conduct the inventory, there, there's no point to it because according to the left, it's racist for a white person to do things that black people aren't doing, but it's also racist to do things that they are doing. So there's no sense in playing a game that you can't win. Uh, and, and that's why all these uh, uh, criticisms are ridiculous. But here's a criticism of the stay-at-home girlfriend trend that is not ridiculous. The real problem with the stay-at-home girlfriend lifestyle is not the stay-at-home part. It's the girlfriend part. The problem, of course, is that these women aren't married. That's the issue. What this trend actually represents is a, is a broader trend uh, in a continued attempt by many people in our culture to figure out a way to enjoy the benefits of marriage without actually getting married. So many young people and young couples, they seek to take on the form of a married relationship, mimic it, but without the substance of the marriage. They're playing house. They're playing pretend. And that's where this trend truly becomes, to use the left's favorite term, problematic. That's what you actually see in that video. It is, it is a, a woman who's just like, it's, it's house. You're playing house. It is a more sophisticated game of house. The problems here are many, but we will um, briefly focus on just one. You know, both the stay-at-home girlfriend and the working boyfriend have made themselves incredibly vulnerable here. And they've set themselves up for a nearly inevitable and inevitably messy and heartbreaking split. Because the girl is relying on the guy entirely to subsidize her lifestyle, relying on him to bring home the bacon and bring home everything else too. And yet the one thing she doesn't have from him, the one thing he's not providing, even if she seems to have everything else, is any sort of meaningful commitment. She is leaning on him completely, but he can just step to the side at any moment and send her crashing to the floor. He hasn't even promised not to do that. He hasn't so much as promised not to step to the side. Indeed, by not marrying her, he has promised that eventually he will abandon. Because that's the whole reason why you refuse to get married to someone is because you want to leave your you want to leave that escape hatch in place. A refusal to commit is a commitment of its own. You are committing to breaking up down the line eventually. And when that day comes, you know, the, the breakup of this non-committed, effectively meaningless relationship will be very messy and difficult, much more messy and difficult than a breakup between boyfriend and girlfriend ought to be. Because normally dumping your girlfriend should require no more than one awkward conversation, and that's it. You go your separate ways, and you never have to speak to each other again if you don't want to. That's the way it should go. If you're just dating someone, 
That's the whole point of dating. That's one of the things that's supposed to separate it from marriage is that you're not in really entangled in any way. You just, you're living your own lives. You're dating. And if you want to live one life together, that's why you get married. And the great thing is that if you're, not, if you're living separate lives and then you decide that, okay, we're not going to get married. This isn't going to work out. Just go your separate ways. That's it. You'll be sad about it for a while, but you'll get over it. Once you've added houses and mortgages into the mix, then when, you, when, you, when you've taken on many of the obligations and shared roles of a marriage, even though you aren't married, you end up with a breakup that feels and looks an awful lot like a divorce. So you never had the benefit of the marriage, but you still get the crap storm of the divorce. It's the worst of all worlds. And then the guy in this arrangement is, no be- is in no better shape. He's working every day and providing for a woman who has made no commitment to him. He has taken on a dependent and yet still has no wife. He is a man with no wife, no children, no marriage, no family, and yet still has a dependent that he's taking care of every day. You know, there's that crass expression often used to describe a man with a living girlfriend. They say, well, you know, he's getting the milk for free, so why buy the cow? But the truth is that he's the cow in this scenario. He's being used by a woman who, again, has made no promises to him, no commitment, no oath of fealty. She could be spending part of her ample free time every day in bed with some other guy she met at the gym or whatever, and she wouldn't even be violating any vow by doing so because no vow was ever made. The guy can't even say, you broke your promise. I never promised anything to you. Not officially. We couldn't even call it an an affair because they aren't married, so it's not an affair. She would be cheating, yes, but cheating what? An ambiguous relationship where no official promises or commitments have ever been made? So what? This is why if you want to enjoy a relationship that looks and acts like a marriage, there is no substitute for actually getting married. No matter how desperately our culture looks for a substitute, it's just not there. And that is why even after defending these stay-at-home girlfriends from some of their especially stupid critics, I must still say that these stay-at-home girlfriends are unfortunately canceled. Although they could just graduate to being stay-at-home wives and mothers, and then that would be a whole other story entirely. And that'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.